the rest of the magnets finally came in, so I'm just sticking them in the remaining spinners. I just have them on these spindles that I made up. The important thing, of course, is to make sure that the polarity is right, so I just check to make sure that the stick I'm holding is attracted to the ones that are already in there, and I know that I'm good to snap it in the others. This is the plywood for one of the one of the final boards for mounting the spinners. I need to cut out a hexagon that is uh, 82 centimeters across. And I figure when you're doing a geometric construction like that, it's best to go back to the source. So we're looking at book four, proposition 15 here. In a given circle to inscribe an equilateral and angular hexagon. So let's get started. There we go. I'm not sure how much that shows up on the camera, but it's one hexagon. Inscribe it in the circle. Um, I couldn't avoid hitting some of this printing and my attempts at removing it I just made it uglier, I thought. So for this one, I'm going to decide to kind of lean into it and make it a feature. And if I don't like it, I can uh, just get some more plywood. It was like eight bucks a sheet, so whatever. Okay, time to cut this out. first board cut out. So far I'm thinking I kind of like the printing there. Uh, I'm going to put off deciding if I'm keeping it though for now. Okay now I just need to cut out the other two boards. Of course now that I have this one as a template it'll go a lot faster. And there we go. All three boards done. They fit in the frames pretty nicely. Should rivet in pretty well. Next up is drilling the holes that the spinners will mount in. Here are the three stands all welded up. Very simple design. The uh, those gusset pieces probably weren't necessary, but I like how they look. So what remains, I still have to put in those leveling feet because they're pretty rocky because of all the distortion on that thin walled tube. And then I realized I also hadn't uh, planned for how to run the wiring for the power. So I'm going to run that down the outside tube and I'm going to drill a hole down there and put a little grommet in there to let it come out. The other side of the wiring problem is that I didn't drill a hole in the frames before welding them up because there has to be a hole to come through. But um, this one at least made a bit more sense. I wasn't entirely sure where the stand tube was going to end up. So I, I've been able to mark that out and now I can just drill some holes there. Okay, I have no idea what's going on with that whole saw, but I'll just drill it out normally, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. The whole saw was excessive to begin with. This is the template I made for drilling out the test board. I could do the geometric construction on here. Um, and drill out the holes and then just clamp this onto the plywood and drill through as a template. 
and then move it around to cover as much area as I need. And that worked fine, and I'm going to use it for the final ones, but with a small change. I want to drill much smaller pilot holes, because I'm going to be drilling out the final holes with a, a Forstner bit. And I just want a little guide for that central brad to, to lock into. And then I can do this from both sides to get a really clean edge on both sides. Um, I don't want to risk it chipping out in any way. I don't want uh, to risk um, having the spinners rub in any way. So I think it's worth the while. So I'm going to redo, remake this uh, template, but with a smaller drill, with a smaller hole, and I'll just space them over a little bit. So they should all work fine. Okay, now I have to use it. So I have one of the, the boards up here. This is one of the ones with the printing on the other side, which I think will be fine, but might as well start with this one in case I end up wanting to trash it. So first I need to find the center, which I'll just uh, do from corner to corner. That'll be good enough. Um, establish the center hole. And then I can place the template on top of there and align it. I wanna make sure that this is aligned with the hexagon of the board. But uh, other than that, the only tricky thing will be making sure not to drill too many because I only need the 37 holes. Um, so that's one center one and three ring hexagonal rings around that, concentric hexagonal rings. Um, I don't want to drill more than that because that'll be very visible. So other than that, it should be pretty straightforward. all the holes drilled except the very center one because I, I haven't made up a jig for drilling the uh, motor mount holes around it. So I'm going to leave that for now. Um, I didn't work quite as well as I was hoping, still quite a bit of chip out. Part of the problem is that I was drilling the pilot holes from the, the far side, the, the bad side of the plywood. Um, and that was just sort of thoughtlessness on my part. There's no real need for that. So I might try that on the other one. The drilling with the Forstner from both sides was, eh, it kind of worked. I'm not sure it was really worth it. Um, I'm going to do some tests on this one to see if the holes ended up spaced well enough uh, to work. So here's some tests in. Um, they're spinning fine. I think this board will be usable. Um, the holes are definitely l lacking perpendicularity. Um, this one spinner in particular is pretty candy wampus, but uh, luckily I got these extra thick mill spec washers, so they stand quite a bit proud of the board. So that still works. And I think I'm just going to continue um, with this technique for now, because it seems to be working well enough. Hey everyone, so I failed to get audio on the next couple clips because I'm I'm not that good at using the new microphone. That's what it comes down to. But basically I needed to make a template for drilling out the mounting holes for the motor around the central hole. So we're going to go to the mill and use the bolt hole pattern feature of the DRO to do that, which makes it all really quite simple. <music>
Well, this is annoying. This is the second panel that I drilled out and I was thinking it was going really well. I like the holes a lot better, but then when I got around to placing them on here, getting collisions. What I did differently here was with the drill template, I anchored it in the middle and then just kept rotating it around, which made it very easy to make sure I was getting all the holes. Um, but that meant that the error was able to add up and add up and add up and add up. And by the time I got around to full circuit, collision. So I'm going to have to completely remake this panel. It's not salvageable. Um, and this time, well, in the next one that I drill, I need to work out concentrically more, anchoring it in the local area and working out from the center so the error doesn't have time to build up like that again. Last. So I'm not even done with the third panel and it's already happening again. Those should have been in the same place. So I think I'm going to give up on the metal template idea. Uh, it made sense in my head, not working in practice. So I think since I only have another week to get these done, and at this point I'm going to have to remake some panels, it looks like, I'm going to go get some big templates printed, uh, just on a large format printer. And then it'll all be in one coordinate system and it'll all work well. I don't see any other reason to, to mess around with this anymore. I'm back later the same day. I now have some more plywood and I printed out these templates to tell me where the holes go. And hopefully I won't mess it up this time. Uh, but first I have to cut these down into the hexagons and this time I'm going to be smart and clamp them together and just do them at the same time. Here's the first template about to be drilled. I roughly cut it out just to align it better. It's been pinned through the center hole into a hole that I drilled in the center of the wood panel. So now I can clamp it down with some clamps and just go around and spot drill all of the holes. Here are all three panels up and running on their stands and I'm pretty happy with the result and the motion I really love. However, unfortunately, a problem that I thought had, I had solved has come back. I've been calling this an entropy trap and it happens when all of them are aligned in just the wrong way so that they're not passing the rotational energy around anymore. And if you notice the arms of, these, of this inner ring, this one's on the inside, this one's outside, inside, outside, inside, outside, inside, outside, etc. And it's just enough to keep it from, from anything from happening. Now sometimes it'll bounce out of the state. I've seen it happen where one of these just starts to spin a little bit more and a little bit more and finally has enough to break free and then chaos comes back and that's great. Um, but it's not reliable and I really fear just having them sit like this way for hours at a time when I can't get in there to work on them once they're finally installed. Now, hopefully I have a solution for this. On this panel up here, it just so happened that I forgot to put the washer behind that spinner there. So it's just cranked up against the plywood and doesn't spin. But it happens to be in such a configuration that it has its arms pointed at its nearest neighbors. And so they can't get into the state that we see over here because that wouldn't be a stable configuration. They'd be pushed out of it. So my plan is to drill a hole from the backside of this plywood almost all the way through and put a magnet in there right between two of the spinners. 
and that'll help prevent it from getting in the state, hopefully. This is a test bed I put together out of some spare spinners um, and to figure out how to mount that magnet that I need. So on the far side, I realize it's pretty easy to find the center point between two of the spinners, even if I don't unmount them. That's easy. Then the question is how to drill it to get it absolutely as close as possible all the way through this thickness, but without actually breaching this, the top face and being visible. So what I've come up with is, first I have just a little uh, quarter inch Forstner bit with tape to show me how far I can go. And that gets me to the point where the brad on the point of it isn't, isn't piercing through. But that doesn't, that actually leaves the base of it still fairly far away. So in addition to that, I also have on the drill, I got a quarter inch end mill so I can get a nice flat bottom. And once I've already started the hole with the Forstner, then it can track fairly well. And then I found this pulley, which was 3 8 inch, which is the same as the shank on the quarter inch end mill. And I'm able to use that as a depth gauge, as a depth stop. So this will prevent me from going all the way through. It gets close, but not quite all the way through. And doing that, I have, I've done it on here. You can't see it on the, the front facing side. And if I get one of the quarter inch magnets that I have, these are bigger than the ones I'm using on the spinner. Um, Cause I might, as, I figured I might as well get that. So this, these repulse. So I want this side up so I can place that in that hole. And now when these spin, even if this is nowhere near, that spinner doesn't want to be in this position, which is, which keeps it away from the danger areas of the entropy trap, hopefully. So now I just need to do this on the three reel boards and we'll see how it goes. Here's the first panel running with the magnet now embedded in the plywood. Um, I don't think it's particularly visible um, in terms of how it's affecting the motion. If you've been staring at this stuff as long as I have, I think you can tell, but for the most part, it's just more weird, chaotic motion. So I'm gonna let this run possibly overnight. We'll see how that goes. At the moment, the magnet is just being held in with some tape. Um, I will eventually have to epoxy them in place because of course they're trying to be pushed out by the other magnets. So they have to be held in there uh, quite firmly. But I don't wanna make that permanent until I know this works. So I'm gonna let this run. I'm probably gonna go ahead and drill the holes on the other two panels just while I'm set up to do that. But um, I'm gonna wait in, until I uh, make this official. Now that I can inspect it up close, I realize this isn't missing in the washer be behind it like I thought, uh, the bearing has just been, has just slipped out of it. Cause again, it's, it's just a press fit in there. So I can work that out with a, a screwdriver and it'll be just fine again, which is good because um, screwing these back in again against the stop nuts is a real pain. And also um, it means I wasn't silly enough to forget a washer back there, so yay. And here are all three panels with the uh, hidden magnets inserted. Uh, I'm just gonna let these run probably overnight and we'll see if any of them fall into another entropy trap. They've now been running for over 24 hours total. Still no entropy trap. So I think, I think this is good. I'm not gonna have much more time to test them before installation. So I'm just gonna have to hope this is it. And this was the final piece of prep for the installation, the backdrop. This is a uh, Penrose tiling, which is a cool algorithm. It can give you a tiling that never repeats. Um, and I'd been experimenting with years on doing a, a stochastic gradient across them. And this is the first time I've actually used it in installation. So hopefully it all turns out pretty well. Just got this printed up at a print store. Pretty easy. So that's it. Just need to load the car now and installation will be tomorrow. Uh, this video will probably be up, by the time this video is up, it'll probably be installed, but you'll have to wait another week for the 
the video showing the installation itself. So catch you then.